The Chicago Bulls have their playing game tonight against the Toronto Raptors. In a win or go home scenario, can the Chicago Bulls play well enough to overcome the Toronto Raptors to go on and then face the Miami Heat? We're going to talk about all that today. Plus, we're going to talk about the front office staff and the coaching staff getting extensions before the start of the season. We'll get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And uh, if you guys want to follow me right off the top, you can do so at CEO Hayes, that's CEO H-A-I-Z-E. If you want to follow the show, you can do so at Bulls Central Pod. But let's get into it. The Bulls, the day has come here. The Bulls face the Toronto Raptors today in their playing game. One of maybe the only playing game. Maybe it's one of two that they play. But it all comes down to the Chicago Bulls doing and taking care of business against a team that they have not, well, it's been a mixed bag against the Toronto Raptors uh, this season, even though they do did own the tiebreaker for the Chicago Bulls. One of the biggest things in this game that is going to matter is rebounding. You have uh, the Toronto Raptors, who are the second best offensive rebounding team in the NBA. Can the Chicago Bulls rebound the ball well enough on the defensive side to keep the Toronto Raptors from getting a huge number of, uh, of second chance points and second chance opportunities from that Raptors team? When you look at the, the Toronto Raptors, they have an offensive rebounding percentage of 30%, whereas the Bulls only have a 22%. The Bulls are 28th. The Raptors are second in the NBA. When you look at opponent field goal percentage, the Bulls rank 16th at, at that with 26.4% of their opponents, where the Toronto Raptors are 15th with 26.3%. Kind of even there, right? So the rebounding battle is going to be a big key for the Chicago Bulls in this game if they want to try to have success against the Toronto Raptors. It, other things matter, of course, but the rebounding battle, especially now that they have Jakob Poto, we've only played them once that they've gotten them, it's going to be Hugely important for the Chicago Bulls in this game to be able to perform on the boards and rebound as a team if they want to have and make it easier for themselves. Easy? No, I won't say that, but they can't make it easier on themselves by rebounding the basketball well. On top of that, how do the Bulls affect the traps? The Toronto Raptors are going to trap the Chicago Bulls. They're going to try to put Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic in terrible positions, but specifically DeMar and Zach, they're going to try to trap them early. They're going to try to get the ball out their hands. And how the Bulls pass the ball, right? If they can limit those turnovers, if they can move the ball before the double or the trap is coming, the Bulls can get open shots in that way. But they're going to have to lock the hell in, period, right? And so the Bulls are going to have to have an offensive game plan that is prepared for what the Toronto Raptors are going to try to do to them defensively. If they do not, Man, it's about to be a long night for the Chicago Bulls, our Chicago Bulls. So, you know, that's another thing. And then, of course, what we've always said with the Bulls, can they shoot the ball at an efficient rate? Can they hit enough threes to keep the Toronto Raptors' defense honest, right? And that goes to, like, some of the players that are going to get wide-open threes. We've seen Patrick Beverly, Alice Caruso be given wide-open threes, and teams dare them to shoot. And if they, won't hit, if they don't hit those open three-pointers, Man, it is going to be a long night for DeMar and Zach to get to work. You're making the Toronto uh, Raptors defense have to work less if our players can't hit their shots. If any night we need those players to hit those open shots, we need them to take them as well and not pass them up, it's tonight, right? And then you look at potential X factors for the Chicago Bulls. Two of our key young players, Patrick Williams and Kobe White, both come off the bench, right? And what Patrick Williams and his size can do, and as I said, and as I pointed out in the clip yesterday, Yes, Patrick Williams has his issues being aggressive with rebounding, but he rebounds some of the best he does against the Toronto Raptors. So are we going to see that level of performance? Are we going to see active and aggressive Patrick Williams coming into this game, or are we going to see passive P, right? That is, that is a, another big story in this game. If we get aggressive, Pat, it makes things easier for the Bulls. Again, I'm, 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 I'm falling short of calling these things that, that are going to make it a, a Bulls win, but it can make it easier on the Bulls. Andre Drummond as well. We need Drum to be locked in in this game. We're going to have to have him locked in and not do any of the goofy shit that he does from time to time. He's going to have to be locked in, play great defense, as well as rebound the ball well. It's going to be important, especially with Nikola Vucevic on the, on the bench, that Andre Drummond rebounds the ball well. No, it's not all on him. It's still team rebounding needs to be a thing, and then the Bulls need to push the pace. But Kobe White, to me, in this game, has the chance to be the biggest X factor, not only because of his shooting ability and how that can keep, help keep that Toronto Raptors defense honest, but as well as just the brand of defense that Kobe White has been playing, right? How aggressively he goes after balls, how he attacks the lane. 
Paul on that last comment. But how he attacks the lane, right? And if he can get those shots, if he can get to the free throw line, those are going to be important, especially with Kobe White being able to keep up that scoring pressure a little bit. And I, and I don't like to make it just about him because, yeah, Derrick Jones Jr., Javante, whoever ends up playing needs to hit their shots as well. I would assume if he can get out in transition, get downhill and attack the rim as well and finish at the rim on top of that and hit his open shots that he's going to be given as well. Yes, it's all important. But if you look at any one player to carry that offensive load for the bench, it's probably going to be Kobe White. And the fact that Kobe White has found a way to contribute to the game outside of just scoring, it may make him the biggest X factor tonight for the Bulls. Him and Pat are the co-X factors to me because, as well, I know I talked a lot about rebounding. Also, Pat's defense, Patrick Williams being the best per percentage three-point shooter that the Chicago Bulls have, is also going to be hugely important in this game because we need shooting. One of the things that definitely helps against the Toronto Raptors is having solid shooting, shooting the ball efficiently, right? So we need that. We're also going to have to win the, 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 the possession. We are going to have to try to get more possessions than the Toronto Raptors. That comes via rebounding the ball well, defensively keeping them off that offensive, off those offensive glass, but also limiting the turnovers while trying to get some turnovers yourself. Winning the 50-50 balls, right? And not doing the boneheaded type foul things that give them extra possessions or free throw shots, right? This game, I think, while I don't want to overhype the importance of it, it's drastically important if the Bulls want to keep their season going, but the Bulls have to be locked in. This is going to be telling for just how prepared the Bulls are for this type of atmosphere, how well the coaching staff is prepared for what Nick Nurse is about to try to do to them defensively. Nick Nurse is going to come in with a great game plan. That's just it. It is what it is, right? And so if the Chicago Bulls can come in, if they can combat that, if they can play well against that, if Billy Donovan has a well-coached defensive scheme, Fred Van Vliet also having a quote yesterday to say that he feels Billy Donovan is one of the better defensive coaches. Don't know what basketball he's watching, but hey, he's a player. I'm just a guy sitting in the studio talking about basketball with you lovely people. So, you know, at the end of the day, the Bulls just have to take care of business. The Bulls have to execute. The Bulls have to rebound. The Bulls have their own destiny to a degree in their hands, and it may come down to just if they're willing to dig in and uncover and play with the necessary heart and determination to fire off against the Toronto Raptors team. We'll see, man. I Listen, this is going to be a wild game to watch, and I hope it's an entertaining game, right? I hope that the Bulls don't have some of the flat performances that they have had in key important games over the course of the season. The Bulls have to perform. And if the Bulls can win this game, on the horizon is the Miami Heat, who lost to the Hawks last night. Now, the Bulls are 3-0 against the Miami Heat this season. Now, some people can make that, let them, that make them feel more secure. But with how up and down the Bulls season has been, it's just, I don't feel as comfortable in that. Now, the, the, the Bulls team can't look ahead. They need to focus on tonight. But luckily, I'm not playing the game, so I can look ahead as well and kind of focus on what could come next for the Chicago Bulls. And part of what could come next? Is that Miami Heat squad waiting for you after you beat the Toronto Raptors and then have to travel to the Miami to Miami to face the Heat, right? In another win or go home scenario, right? And we know Jimmy Butler has that extra gear. Jimmy has that dog in him, right? This team has had moments of having dogs in them. They had a little, they've had some puppies, right? But it it again, either way, whatever happens tonight and Friday, if the Bulls do make it to Friday to face the Miami Heat. The Bulls face two tough matchups, and do not let the fact that they're 3-0 against the Miami Heat make you think that this game against the Heat is going to be in any way easy for the Chicago Bulls. They're going to have to perform. Last time we faced the Miami Heat, it took Patrick Williams to go on a Kobe-like run and scoring like 15 straight points for us to really seal that game in because they were battling back. So, again, I, I always look at this team, and I, and I have my questions and my doubts when the facing teams that have gone through these long playoff series and battles, and that is the Miami Heat, that is Eric Spoelstra. But, we, but tonight we have Nick Nurse, and we got to get past Nick Nurse and the Toronto Raptors, their length, their size, their defensive versatility, and their rebounding. And the Bulls have to find a way to lock in and win this game tonight against the Toronto Raptors. Now, before we go, I do want to talk about another piece of news that came out yesterday, and that is that most of the Bulls' front at office and coaching staff actually all got extensions before the start of the season. So while we found out about Billy Donovan having that extra extension, we're now finding out that almost everybody got extensions. What does that mean? Like, when you really look at this team, right, the fact that the team has not just had any type of postseason success yet, but now we're locked into a staff, we're locked into a head coach, we're locked into a coaching staff, we're locked into a front office. 
that while has had some success, while has had some 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 moments and flashes of being really, really good, have not yet shown the ability to get to the hump that we need them to, and that is winning a playoff series. But what that tells me is that we're locked in with this version of the staff for a while, right? Which means that the only thing that probably will change in any time soon is the roster, right? It puts more pressure on the players, and it may make some players, unfortunately, scapegoats at the end of the season for however the season ends. Now, being a scapegoat in this season may not be as bad of a thing because we need a lot of overhaul on this roster, not a complete rebuild, but we do need some changes with this roster to have a better balance, to play more modern style of basketball, to be able to shoot more threes, to have more size. We need that. But in now finding out where this ownership and the front office has put us, it's put us in a situation where you can't, we're, we're, realistically, now is there a world in which some coaches change? Is there a world in which uh, the front office know? Because listen, Paxton got o- over a decade. Acme's not going anywhere anytime soon unless Eversley leaves for another position, but AK is going to be here for a while. But with that being said, right, what this team is going to do, at least now looking in the offseason, you're not going to look at an email Oduka. He's not coming, right? You're not looking at even a change of assistance that maybe Billy Donovan may listen or may come in with the game. It's probably not happening. The, the, what, this, uh, what this has told me and has informed me of is that if any major change is coming with this team, it is going to be with the roster. Now, some people could agree. Some people could disagree. Some people would think, no, we actually just need a better coach. We have talent on this roster, which we do have talent on this roster. Hence me saying a full rebuild isn't likely and should not come. But a retool definitely needs to happen. And I think when you hear that now most of that front office and, and coaching staff got extensions, that puts, the, that puts the onus, the pressure, whatever, on them pointing the finger at the players. And, and, and in some ways, that is right, right? We've had players that have underperformed. We've had players that have regressed. We have players that, did, uh, that, you know, even if they are still good players, which we do have players that are still good players, you have to, you have to facilitate change some way so some of those players may be on the move. You know, I know that, that the Billy Donovan extension already put a bad taste in a lot of Bulls fans' mouth. I don't know if this hearing that the coaching staff and other people also got extensions furthers that or makes that even worse or is still most of the dire on Billy Donovan and the discontent there. But either way, it seems like we are locked in with this version of the coaching staff and front office for a while for the Chicago Bulls. It is what it is at that point. We can't control it. So it is what it is. Um, am, am I super happy about it? No. But I always thought, and I've been saying to you guys, Billy Donovan leaving is not likely, and it's probably not going to happen. We're probably going to have Billy for at least another two seasons, if not more, right? AK just told you guys, he's definitely not going anywhere. This Bulls team, if you follow this franchise for a while, you know we haven't had very many president of basketball operations, and they're typically given a long time to try to turn it around. As long as that key stat of being top five in attendance, which it came out yesterday as well, that the Chicago Bulls are, were number one in home attendance this season, which... Considering the up and downness of the season, it's been, it's, it may sound a little crazy, but Bulls Nation is passionate. Bulls Nation is worldwide. Bulls Nation is locked in with this team for, for better or for worse, and we've seen that over the history of the team. We've had worse teams than this that have performed worse over a longer amount of time, and we've still been in top five to top ten of attendance. That attendance number, until that drops, you, 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 Jerry Reinsdorf isn't going to make a heavy change in anything right because jerry is all about that bottom dollar and so if anything's going to change we know ownership's not changing front office is now not changing coach staff is now not changing this puts a bigger highlight on there may be some major roster moves coming for the chicago bulls but you guys can let me know what you think on all that down below thank you for tuning in to another daily episode of chicago bulls central you can follow the show at bulls central pod you can send us any feedback questions comments concerns BullsCentralPodGmail.com. Last, if you want to leave a voicemail and our text message for our mailbag episodes going down on the weekends, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See right if you can. It's game day. I'll see you guys today for the live pregame, halftime, and postgame shows all going down on the channel today. And like I like to end everything on, see red. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Breaks Breaks Media. Media. Media.